Hello plant people, I'm Joex of the Plant Box and today I would like to talk about light and lighting for your plants. I'm going to share to you guys my ways on how I provide the right amount of light for my houseplants for them to grow and flourish. So first of all, why does plant needs light? Well, of course, we were taught about this during our grade school years that plants need light for photosynthesis, a process where plants produce energy with the use of light. So that's why I personally do not believe that some of the houseplants will thrive well in low light conditions. Plants still need light for them to grow. So my first tip is research. I bet all of us plant parents have a wish list of plants that we want to add in our collection. But before putting a tick on that wish list and buying that plant, I advise you to research first on the care requirements, especially the light that the plant needs. You can read books, articles, or browse the internet about that plant and what was their living condition in their natural environment. Whether this plant likes to be in direct sun or is it found on the floor's floor shaded by trees from the harsh sunlight. So with this in mind, you will have an idea of the light intensity that they need to thrive. Um, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to go to I'll be honest with you guys, sometimes I cannot control myself bringing home that beautiful plant from a plant store without realizing where am I gonna place this plant. <laughs> so before buying, stop, look and scan. Stop, look and scan your room on where you're planning to place this plant. Does this room have any windows for natural light? Then if yes, what direction is it oriented? So whip up your compass and check the orientation of your windows so you know the light intensity your windows is having from the sun. So we're going to talk about window orientations and their light intensities. So north windows does not get direct sunlight through them but they provide consistent light levels throughout the day. So you can place plants that prefer shady or indirect light in a north facing windows. Examples of these are ferns, photos, begonias or karateyas. But during the winter, this spot is not conducive for plant growth as light levels are low during the winter season. On the other hand, south windows receive direct sun during the late morning like around 9 to 10 am ish till the afternoon. South windows has a stronger light intensity through them, therefore this is a good spot for plants that require direct sunlight, like succulents, cacti, or hardy plants like torsinas. East windows benefit from the morning sun and the light here is less intense, so it is best for plants that are in partial shade or requires morning sunlight only. While the west windows get a long period of direct sun, especially around the afternoon time, but the intensity is less than a south window, so your sun loving plants will also benefit in this window orientation. I prefer to place most of my plants in my south facing window, especially those variegated plants that require more sun, and those flowering plants like orchids as well. I make sure to place them at least far away from the window as possible to prevent them from being toasted under the sun. I also check them from time to time for signs of sunburn and move them to a different location if needed to. So with your research and knowledge of natural light orientation, you can almost replicate the light requirements of your plants from their natural habitat. Natural light coming from the wonderful sun is still the best source of light for your plants. But if we are unfortunate that the room where we want to place that plant does not have enough natural light, we can still help them with supplemental lighting. Now we are going to talk about supplemental lighting. As I mentioned in the house planter video, but if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a card here and you should go check it out. I use the supplemental lighting for my plants to give them boosts of light for growth and flowering. I also mentioned in that video that I've been experimenting with regular LEDs as a grow light or as a supplemental light because I find grow lights are too expensive for me. But <laughs> I have budgets for my plants though so anyways. So I have 4 sets of smart LED lights. I use smart LED lights which are then connected to my Google Nest. Hey Google, turn on plant lights. <laughs> Alright, turning on 5 lights. And they are scheduled to turn on for 12 hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Plus, these LED are dimmable and right. color temperature changing from warm white to cool white. I always set them in daylight to get the right balance between the color spectrum that the plant needs for growth. I won't go into details about the spectrum of light. So basically, plants need a full spectrum of light from a daylight or a sunlight. So I set mine to daylight just to get a close representation of full spectrum. I'm not 100% sure with this because you will need a spectrometer to see the spectrum of light that this LED emits. Half a loaf is better than none. 
I'm going to leave an Amazon link in the description box of the products that I'm going to mention in this video if you wish to buy them as well. What I have in my setup is a main plant light which is a 6000 lumens LED garage light which I hang in the ceiling where most of my plants are. Although I have a small south facing window so it's kinda small therefore there's not enough light coming from the window especially on the right side of the room so that LED garage light supplements that area. Then what I have for my other supplemental lights like in my hanging plant light over my side table, then the dual clip on light over my tropical plants, and over my propagation station are 806 lumen smart LED bulbs. As you can see, these bulbs does not have any cover or diffuser on because I took them off just to increase the light levels or intensity. But, 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 <laughs> I do not recommend doing this as there's a risk of electrical shock if you accidentally damage or touch any internal parts of the bulb. Manufacturers place the cover there for a reason. Not just to diffuse light but also to insulate what's inside the bulb. Again, please do not try this at home. In retrospect, I should have used a higher lumen LED bulb or a GU10 bulb which is usually have a clear cover which does not diffuse light. Lux is the intensity of light or a measurement of how much light is around you or in this case your plants. A little disclaimer here, our mobile phones are not built and calibrated to do this and might not give you accurate results. Also this is not an accurate way of measuring light intensity that your plant needs. It should be done by using a power meter or a quantum meter where it measures photons of light to a plant's perspective. These devices are expensive but will give you accurate results. So, what I'm going to share with you serves as a guide only and to give you an idea of how much light your plants is receiving. But then again, I do not guarantee it's always an accurate measurement. So, use a phone with a light sensor. Usually, it is located at the top of your phone, near or in between the earpiece and the front camera. Then download the app called Lux. Run the app and it will automatically read the Lux levels around your plants. So based on my research and experiment on this, if your plants are receiving less than 500 lux, it's way too low for them to try. Some will start to be leggy, some to no growth at all. But if it's under the 500 lux to 1000 lux levels or more, your plants will thrive. I noted faster growth, bigger leaves, and some of them started to flower as well. So as my general rule, since I'm not quite sure with the accuracy of my phone in reading lux levels, I place my plants under 1000 lux levels or even higher. So that is it on how I provide lights for my plants. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot in today's episode. Leave a comment down below on what you think of today's video or if you have any questions or even suggestions for future content. Also, don't forget to like this video and share this superb sensitivity to everyone. Please subscribe to see more and support this channel. Click the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. Again, thank you so much guys for watching. See you soon and stay safe everyone.